This is Dr. Paul Beckett from Florum, the Japanese knotweed specialists. Welcome back, hopefully, as you uh, will have watched part one. This is part two of uh, a series of uh, presentations on knotweeds, the good, the bad and the fugly. This is part two, the bad. The intention of these uh, presentations are to show anyone who's interested, really, um, that there are a lot more knotweeds and related species out there and plants that look similar to knotweed than, than Japanese knotweed, which is the bad. That's the one that's uh, really um, caused there to be a control industry dealing with Japanese knotweed and as it affects property. So this uh, part two, the bad, is about all those plants that are covered by legislation, particularly in the UK, um, because they uh, represent a risk to property. So uh, we'll crack on. This is a variety of Japanese knotweed. So this is um, a, the Japanese knotweed, the species that's covered by legislation. So if you have it in your property, you do not want it there and you need to do something to get rid of it. But this is a variety called Milk Boy. And it's called Milk Boy because of these lovely milky white blotches on the leaf. Now this is caused by a mutation that prevents the cells from producing the green pigments, photosynthetic pigments. So you get this white blotching. It's quite common in lots of different varieties, uh, lots of different plants where, where they have a variegated variety. So that's a uh, milk boy when it's quite young. So you can see it does look just like Japanese knotweed, except that it's got these white or blotch white leaves. Another variety of Japanese knotweed here this has red flowers, uh, hence it's called crimson beauty. So it's just like Japanese knotweed, uh, but when it flowers, the flowers are red. And there you can see it along a path. Um, very different to Japanese knotweed because of those red flowers. So it's, uh, it's quite an attractive plant, and that's why it's been planted. And here, this is probably the most common variety of Japanese knotweed. Again, it is Japanese knotweed. It's the species Japanese knotweed. It's just a variety that's got a different shape. This is the dwarf variety known as compacta variety, compacta. And it is very similar to Japanese knotweed, except it's got, um, it doesn't grow as tall. So less than a meter tall. It has smaller, rounder leaves and its flowers tend to be a uh, pinky color. And uh, there's a close up of it, you can see the leaves are more round than, than this sort of shield or heart shape of Japanese knotweed uh, and the flowers are a pinky colour. This is a different species, but it's covered by legislation, at least in the UK. This is giant knotweed. Now, this looks very similar in many ways to Japanese knotweed. It's got the same sort of stems, the same branching pattern, except it has massive leaves. So these leaves are about two to three times the size of, uh, of regular Japanese knotweed leaves. It's got a marked midrib as well, like um, some Persicaria species that I mentioned in part one. Um, but it's, yeah, so it basically looks like Japanese knotweed, except it's got massive leaves. So you see in the side of the plant, you think, oh, that's knotweed, except it's got massive leaves. It's probably giant knotweed. And there's a close up of the leaf. Uh, Another feature to distinguish it from Japanese knotweed, if, if the size wasn't enough, is that it tends to have crinkled edges and it also has lobes at the base of the leaf as well, whereas standard Japanese knotweed has a flat shield shape at the, at the base of the leaf. So this is the hybrid between Japanese knotweed and giant knotweed. It looks very much like Japanese knotweed and you'd be forgiven for thinking it was Japanese knotweed if you first looked at it. Giveaway is that it has this lobing at the base of the leaf and also tends to have a more crinkly edge, but it, it is hugely varied. There are lots, there are other features, there are little hairs on the underside of the leaf called trichomes that um, are varying length. They're long on, on giant knotweed and absent on Japanese knotweed, and uh, the hybrids have, a, have um, various lengths of these trichomes that you can look, but sometimes you might need to look through a magnifying glass to see them. So usually it's the, the leaf shape that gives it away. But there, there again, that's a huge variety. Otherwise, it looks a lot like Japanese knotweed. So you're not really going to mistake it for, for anything else. Again, the hybrid as Japanese knotweed and giant knotweed is covered by legislation that makes it illegal to allow it to grow in the wild in, uh, in, in the legislation in the UK. 
Now this is a different genus. This is a Persicaria species, but it's called Himalayan knotweed, and it is also covered by legislation in in uh, in Scotland, I think. Um, not yet in the UK, but it's certainly one that's uh, under consideration for being included in the same legislation as Japanese knotweed, um, because it does grow very invasively. It looks like a lot of other persicarias actually. It looks a, a little bit like um, some of the persicarias that are desirable to have a, a narrow, thin leaf like, like fleece flower and um, maybe even lesser knotweed. But uh, uh, so, and it's also got the pale midrib that you can see, but it's not nearly as showy and it does grow quite invasively. So it's definitely one that you don't want to have in your garden. So that was it. Uh, just a quick run through the bad, the knotweeds that you don't want in your garden. If you want to know more about Japanese knotweeds, um, then visit our website. There's a lot of information on there. And if you do have any photographs um, of knotweeds or plants that you're concerned might be knotweed, then please do use the Upload My Photo uh, feature on our website. Works very well on a smartphone if you're out and about as well. Um, and if you do have any comments, um, please send them to us email or, or use the comments below. And if you have liked this video, please like. And uh, I hope you'll in, in, uh, join us for uh, part three, the, the Fugly. Thanks very much for listening.